Hello, and welcome to NetApp KV TV. My name is Ellen, and I am a technical support engineer at NetApp. In this video, I will demonstrate how to restore a VMware ESX virtual machine from an NFS volume data store snapshot. This video is based on the KB ID 1029898. In this video, I will walk you through procedures 2A and 4, which are the steps to follow if you're using a cluster mode system. The KB article also describes procedures specific to 7 mode, which you will need to follow in place of procedure 2A. Procedure 4 is the same for both 7 mode and cluster mode systems. First, I will walk you through procedure 2A, which describes how to create a full NFS data store from a storage side snapshot. First, putty on to your cluster. From there, just pull up a list of your snapshots with the volume, snapshot, show, And then you'll also need to include your vServer, which in this case is going to be SVM1, and your volume name. For this, it will be our NFS volume, NFS1. So I have one recent snapshot that we will use to restore from. For this procedure, we'll take advantage of our flux clone license, which will allow us to use the volume clone create command. Note that the syntax of the specific commands may vary from ONTAP version to ONTAP version. If you attempt to run a command and can't find the equivalent command for your ONTAP version, I would advise you to look at the ONTAP command manuals, which you can find on our documentation page on the NetApp website. So this flag here, the dash flex clone, is going to be the name of the newly cloned volume. For our purposes, I will name it NFS1 clone. Our parent volume is going to be the volume we are cloning from, in this case, NFS1. Keep the cloning process in the foreground, that way you can see the progress. This is the way to specify which snapshot you're restoring from. Note that this particular field will not autofill. So that's why we advise running the snapshot show command in the beginning. We would also advise setting the space guarantee flag to none. This will ensure that it does not automatically thick provision the, the clone by default. And so to recap the fields that we have populated in our example, we're running the volume clone create command using the flex clone license. We have the flex clone flag, which is the name of our newly cloned volume, our type, which we want to set to read write, our parent volume, which is the volume that we are cloning from, junction active, true, foreground, true, that way you can monitor the progress of the clone process, the parent snapshot, which is the snapshot you are restoring from, the vServer, which you're going to need to place the clone, the junction path, which we will need to eventually mount our clone and create a data store from it, and then the space guarantee, which you will want to set to none, that way the clone is not created as thick provision by default. Now we can see that the job is running, and we can see this because of our foreground true flag. And we can see that our clone completed successfully. So if we just run a volume show command, we should now see our cloned volume alongside our original volume. At this stage, we'll continue to procedure four of the original KB article. This procedure must be followed by both cluster mode and seven mode systems. 
Now we need to mount our new NFS clone to an ESX host so that way we can restore a specific VM. Open up the vSphere web client and navigate to Hosts and Clusters. From here, select which host you would like to mount your new storage to. For our purposes, we will pick ESX1. Go to the Storage menu, New Data Store. Here we will pick NFS, then NFS version 3 for the purposes of my example. And here we'll go ahead and populate our cloned volume information. Then go ahead and finish your creation process. And we can now see our NFS1 clone volume created as a data store. Now we need to go ahead and register the VM that we would like to restore. Open up that data store we just created. Then go ahead and browse files. This cloned data store has a few VMs in it. For the purposes of our testing, we'll go ahead and restore this top one right here, W2K misalign. Inside, we can see several files related to the VM. The file we need to look for is the VMX file. Right click this and choose register VM. Fill out the various sections as you see fit. So we can now see the original and the clone. Do not power on the VM at this stage. Instead, go ahead and migrate it onto your production storage. Before powering on the cloned VM, we must remove the original VM from the inventory. We can do this by first powering off the VM, and then choosing the Remove from Inventory option. If you no longer need the original VM, you can also choose to delete from disk instead. Once the original VM is removed from the inventory or deleted from the disk, you should now see only the cloned VM. Now the cloned VM is safe to power on. Finally, Let's clean up the cloned data store and volume we created. First, return to the storage menu and choose to unmount your data store. Once the data store is unmounted, return to the storage command line. Start with a vol show command to pull up information about the volume. Then run a vol offline command. Finally, we can run a vol delete command.
we've now finished our manual restoration and cleaned up the cloned resources we created to perform that restoration. This concludes my demonstration of KB1029898. Thank you for watching.